live from our seven Tasmania studios. Your nightly news with Kim Miller begins now. Good evening, everyone. First tonight, it's the news all Tasmanians were hoping for. Little Shayla Phillips found alive and well. The four-year-old spent two cold nights lost in bushland on the Tasman Peninsula. She was reunited with her mother this afternoon in what police described as a wonderful moment. Let's find out more now. We cross to our reporter, Grace Evans, who's been following the story for the past few days. Grace, this is the best of news. Well, Kim, it really is a miracle. We were there as a number of locals found out the wonderful news. There was plenty of tears, hugging and crying, and many really just in utter disbelief that this four-year-old girl had been found alive. She was found just a kilometre away from her Stormley home, and she popped her head up from some bushland and was noticed by an SES volunteer who then retrieved her. Police have told the media this afternoon Shayla's mother, Bianca, was overwhelmed with the news that her little girl was alive. It was obviously very emotional. I spoke when I passed the, uh, the happy news on to mum. She was uh, very grateful and uh, she was very keen. I said, take a few minutes to have a quick quick shower. She didn't care. She just wanted to get in the car and see her daughter. Great news, mate. I, I didn't think, honestly, I didn't think it had come to this. I thought, you know, bad thoughts. Miracle, mate. Miracle. And I know what the bush is like out there and it's like, it is ankle breaking material, like just walking through the backyard. So, like, yeah, it's crazy. Both Tasmanian and Victorian police resources have been poured into the effort over the past three days, as well as hundreds of local volunteers. Calling out for a response, locals rode on horseback, desperate to hear the voice of one little girl. We were all living in hope that she might just pop out of the bush somewhere and be wandering along the road. Shayla Phillips had just spent her second night lost in the Stormley area, but locals and emergency services kept up the search. Every hopeful their efforts wouldn't be in vain. This is still a search and rescue operation. Uh, the conditions are still conducive to finding her alive and safe, and that's been our focus for today. Rescue efforts focused on a seven kilometre radius surrounding the family backyard she was last seen playing in. While resources on the ground were bolstered today by Victoria Police who provided a sniffer dog and additional aerial support. We've also sought some assistance from our colleagues in the Victoria Police who have also been assisting in relation to the, to the search effort. Drones and heat seeking technology rendered assistance. We do reach out and uh, speak about their experience with people they've been looking for and certain techniques and um, resources they might use to actually get successful outcomes. The remote community of 35 people rallying from preparing food for emergency services to suiting up in their volunteer SES gear and toiling through undulating pastures and bushland. People are just anxious and, and wanting to do what they can and their local um, Country Women's Association have been doing what they can here to um, just be here and help feed the community. A community coming together and shedding a tear of relief as they get back little Shayla. Grace Evans, 7 Tasmania News. To other news now, and a man has died and another has been airlifted to hospital in a critical condition after a five-vehicle pile-up on the Bass Highway. Police are urging drivers to pay attention on the roads after the crash started when a slowing vehicle was hit from behind. Smashed cars strewn across the road, a truck in the opposite lane and a motorbike on its side. This is the confronting scene that faced police. At 6.20 this morning, police were called to a multi-vehicle crash here on the Bass Highway at Carrick. It's believed it started when a motorbike and three dual cab utes initially collided. It was dark at the time and apparently the, the vehicles were slowing uh, and that's when one vehicle has, has not realised the vehicles in, in front of them have slowed. Made worse when only seconds later... The truck following that has, has, has uh, not seen for whatever reason uh, and, and hit those vehicles as well. The rider of the motorbike, a man in his 50s, died at the scene. Another male who was driving one of the utes was airlifted to the Royal Hobart Hospital. We're serious, but we believe non-life-threatening injuries at this stage. It's the second crash in recent days on this section of the Bass Highway. As Tasmania's road toll climbs to 10, police are urging caution. Whatever time of the day you are driving, you know, be, uh, 
be aware of what's going on around you and drive to those conditions. The highway remained closed today as police crash investigation continued to study the scene and search for the cause of the collision. A report will be prepared for the coroner. Josh Duggan, 7 Tasmania News. One of Hobart's most popular historic attractions is reopening after a two-year hiatus. The Cascade Female Factory is now ready for an influx of visitors, just in time for the return of international tourism. A new visitor experience at Cascade Female Factory is set to tell the trials and tribulations of the convict era. There will be exhibitions and uh, you know imagery, uh, the multimedia, um, work that's done here to really bring some, some direct experience to the people who visit here. It's hoped a new interpretation and history centre will help tourism bounce back when the site reopens tomorrow after two years of renovations. But after COVID finally moves through the system, we will see those numbers come back. It will be iconic, it will be important, not just for Tasmania, but all of Australia. As tourism continues to steadily increase, public health is urging everyone to stay safe. But among 5 to 11 year olds, the first dose vaccination rate has stalled at 62%. Pharmacies can now opt into the children's vaccine program to ramp up the rollout. Vaccination rates have slowed down for boosters and children aged 5 to 11 in recent weeks and we need to turn this around. With infection rates amongst this age group a key driver of current case rates, we really do want to see the vaccination rates in our 5 to 11s get even higher. Tasmania recorded almost 1,800 new infections overnight and with winter just around the corner, public health expects we could see up to 2,500 cases per day in the coming weeks due to a new and more transmissible strain of the virus. And we're now seeing those cases of the BA2 variant spread through the north and is now becoming also the dominant variant down in the south. The Premier has so far avoided becoming infected after a family member tested positive to the virus on Wednesday and Peter Gutwin will leave isolation in a few days' time. Ainsley Kosh, 7 Tasmania News. Labor is calling for the state government to invest in ambulance Tasmania services, warning wait times are among the worst in the country. Shadow Health Minister Anita Dow says an additional ambulance station is needed in the Channel region to help manage demand. We want to see more permanent paramedics on the ground here in the Huon Valley. We want to see a dedicated focus on funding an additional station for this region. The state government says it's recruiting 48 new paramedics across the state and has invested in a secondary triage service. Tasmania's aged care employees have taken to the streets in protest over poor working conditions. The Health and Community Services Union is fighting Southern Cross Care's threats to abolish paid meal breaks, a move that would see the already underpaid workers lose $3,000 each year. So what do we want? Paid meal breaks are essential in aged care. It means that there is enough staff at each facility to attend to a situation when call bells are called or if a resident has a fall. The union claims half of Southern Cross care workers could leave if conditions don't improve. The Greens are backing calls to supercharge the Australian and Tasmanian hemp industry. Senator Peter Wish-Wilson says his party would invest $20 million to support research into products and marketing. It's a massive opportunity because Tasmania currently produces 80% of the country's hemp. However, the industry is not going to be able to capitalise on these massive global opportunities unless they get some serious government assistance. The global hemp industry is forecast to grow from 3 dollars to $26 billion by 2025. The Simmons Plains has become the latest racetrack in the country to host the high-powered future of supercars. Racing royalty was on hand to test the Gen 3 vehicles, which will join the ranks next year, bringing to an end a famous rivalry spanning more than half a century. They look like the type of cars you'd find in the city, but drive like they're strictly for the racetrack. From next year, the Chevrolet Camaro and Ford Mustang will be the sight and sound of supercars. A move to the future, it's hoped will offer all the power without the price. The, the laps I did this morning, they're as fast as the supercar is right now, so I expect to see you know, fast speeds with them. 
The Torque Twins are still in development. Who better to test their limits than racing legends Marcus Ambrose and Garth Tander? Really looking forward to finding out what all the hype's about. Both have tasted success at the Short Simmons track. Tander is a seven-time winner. His warning for drivers... The lap time difference between the front of the grid and the back of the grid is so, so tight that you make a mistake at one of those three corners and you're up the back. Pit Lane was today teeming with activity as the crew and wheels rolled in ahead of the weekend. Yet all the buzz was around this new breed of supercar, so I had to give them a try. Screaming 270 kilometres an hour down the straight can only be described one way. Quick. However, their introduction comes at a cost, ending one of Australian sport's greatest long-standing rivalries, Holden versus Ford. That's where our fans come for, you know, they're red or they're blue. We want to keep that going into the, into the future. A future without Holden. Tassie fans have one last chance to say goodbye. Garth Burley, 7 Tasmania News. Emergency services have been called to a late night bingle in Launceston. Fire police and TAS networks went to Hobart Road at 9.30 last night, attempting to unwrap the front end of this white SUV from around a power pole. No serious injuries were recorded in the crash. A timeline has been agreed to remove two tugboat wrecks from the Mersey River. United Salvage will begin working to remove York Cove and Campbell Cove in mid-April, with expectations to finish the job by early May. Specialist divers will be flown in from interstate, while salvage barges will be transferred here from Brisbane and Newcastle. Once removed, the wrecks will be taken to Bell Bay. A Tasmanian couple with hearts of gold are being highlighted for their unsolicited acts of kindness. The Clarence City Council has crowned them Neighbours of the Year. Once neighbours, now family, as Cambridge locals Basil and Helen Murray are recognised for their heartfelt deeds. I'm a great believer in if you want help, you hold your hands out and you'll get it, you'll receive it. The tight-knit community was quick to nominate the married couple as Neighbours of the Year and it's clear why. Basil and Helen host Halloween nights, Christmas parties, neighbourhood barbecues and more. They call us the Happy Street, where they all can come down and enjoy yep, what we do. Lending a helping hand wherever possible. Randomly I'd poke my head out the window, who's that? Basil mow my lawn. I'm aware of their efforts over many, many years of contributing to the community, either through service clubs such as Rotary, through uh, football communities. The Clarence City Council saying a positive support system can make all the difference. When you, somebody does a favour for you or uh, gives you a smile at the morning of the day, it, it just makes your whole outlook on the day look much better. And thankful neighbours are hoping to return the favour. I know I can call them Basil and Helen no matter what. Um, they'd be there in a heartbeat as I would be for them. Brianna Boylan, 7 Tasmania News. The Jack Jumpers have conjured one of the biggest upsets of the season, downing NBL heavyweights the Perth Wildcats in dramatic fashion. The two-point win praised as gritty and determined by the coach, who's refusing to buy in to the finals talk. A win in the West that could be season-defining. This is the most historic of victories for a Tasmanian franchise. Two points the margin, stunning the home side and keeping the Jack Jumpers in the finals race. We're humbled, but we're still hungry. And we, we have seven more games and we'll see what we can do. It was this Josh Adams shot in the dying seconds. Adams, go! That snatched the lead and sent the bench into raptures. A position only made possible by a dogged duo. Jack McVeigh and Fabian Krizlovich draining a combined 30 points and 13 rebounds. McVeigh got it. Couldn't be any wider open. In a seesawing affair, it was evident one man stood in the way of a Tasmanian triumph. Bryce Cotton, three-time league MVP and serial heartbreaker at the death. And somehow got the shooter's roll. But this was one win even out of his grasp. A failed Perth Hail Mary solidifying a nail-biting Jack Jumper's win. Heck of an achievement. Um, another win in, in the W column and um, we just got to... We've got to carry on. They've now beaten all top four teams. Little time to dwell on the success. They face Brisbane tomorrow. 
to soccer, where Devonport's NPL preparation has been crueled by COVID. Coach Tom Ballantyne says he hasn't had a full squad at, squad at any training session or match day so far. The strikers are preparing to meet last year's Premier Glenorchy. Both sides sealed comprehensive victories last weekend. This week in training has been really big for them. Um, you know, obviously, Knights got two results against Devonport last year and they want to put that right this year. The match kicks off at Valley Road tomorrow afternoon. South Hobart Sandy Bay is in the driver's seat on day one of the Cricket Tasmania Premier League final after surviving an early scare against Newtown. The match was in the balance when the Sharks fell to 3 for 95, but captain Sean Willis and Tom Andrews combined for a 175 run fourth wicket partnership. Andrews fell for 130 as the team finished the day on 8 for 323. With the TSL launching this week, tonight's Friday flashback is to one of the statewide league's most popular players. Known as The Weed, Wayne Wiedemann made an instant impact in Devonport in the late 90s and played in one of the coast's most famous clashes. After attaining cult-like status at Adelaide... I don't know that it's booing, but I think it's weed, weed, weed from all the Adelaide fans. The man known affectionately as the Weed made the ironic move to the Crows' biggest rival, Port Power, only the Devonport version. I once said that I'd probably never be caught dead on a Port Adelaide jump, but no, nah, certainly this is a, a bit of a revised model. He had come to a club in crisis, reeling from a $30,000 fine for tax breaches and an ugly dispute with Port Adelaide over the power name change. But Wayne Wiedemann's rugged look and blue-collar playing style struck a chord with fans, instantly becoming the pin-up for the TFL and likewise the media. His shirt, tie and cardigan combo was the order of the day. But the biggest draw cut came in a titanic clash between the coast's biggest rivals, Burnie and Devonport, in 1997. At a time when the TFL was usually drawing crowds in the hundreds, to have 6,000 roll into West Park was staggering, a then record for a home and away game. They came for a reason, Bernie and Devonport were dominating the competition and the spite expected between the two sides lived up to expectation, the weed often at the centre of it all. Kids joined the goal umpire to get the all clear as Bernie went on to win by a goal. No reports were made, although brand new video evidence gave the league the chance to lay charges post-game. As for the weed, he'd go on to represent Tasmania before going out on a high, winning the league's highest honour, the William Leach Medal, in 1998. Well, it's a no drinking coach tonight but sure. we'll, we'll give that a miss. Well ladies and gentlemen let's toast. The number 33 one of the old powers favourite sons. Tom Johnson 7 Tasmania News. Good evening Launceston's 25 today it was a couple above average Hobart and Burnie recorded 23 and Devonport 21. Most temperatures within a degree or two of normal. Wynyard and Bushy Park 23. Friendly Beaches and Grove 22. Low Heads and Helens and the Islands 21. Strawn 19. And a fine afternoon statewide after an early shower cleared the west. Just some patchy cloud over the Ferno group as well. Western Australia has the cloud from the cyclone there. Convective cloud with embedded thunderstorms over the top end southeast Queensland and eastern New South Wales. Tomorrow the trough continues over the mainland. A high to our east extends a ridge over us as well as points to the north and northwest. Winds west northwestly at 10 to 20 knots about the south. North northeasterly is elsewhere as strong as 25 knots over the east. Swells to 4 metres in southern waters. Saturday for Hobart, 23 and sunny. Mostly sunny for Medina as well. Six overnight, 24 the high, 22 for Oatlands and a sunny day. Mostly sunny for Launceston, 9 to 24 the temperature range, 21 the high for Devonport. Sunny 2 for Lyawini and a top of 18 there. 20 the high for Burnie and partly cloudy, OK for Strawn, 21 the maximum, 22 for Marawar. St Helens expecting 22. Mostly sunny, sunny for Swansea, 23 the top for Swansea and Orford. UV peaks at 6 tomorrow and high. On Sunday, fine and partly cloudy, temperatures pushing into the mid-20s, partly cloudy over the north on Monday, a shower too over the south and northeast and west, fresh winds about the coast, and on Tuesday a 20 to 30 percent chance of a shower but most of the state fine and partly cloudy. Showers in Perth tomorrow, sunny weather forecast for Adelaide and Melbourne, a showery 25 in Sydney, showers as well for Brisbane. Cloudy in Hobart, 19 at the moment. Clear in Launceston, 20. And Devonport currently 19 degrees. Kim, great to see you wearing the red in support of the Swans tonight. I'll give you a tip though, buddy. will only kick three this evening in the big win over Geelong. But he'll save his big event for the goals he kicks against the Western Bulldogs in a massive win in Melbourne the following week.
Okay, um, we'll see what happens. I'm not sure how you know that, but we'll see what happens. That's all your news for this Friday. Thanks for joining us. Good night.